Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to show you how to use AI to write government contracting proposals. Let's get into it. So first things first, before you even get into finding government contracts, you need to have your documents ready. So what I mean by that is you have to have a, your compliance, a compliance document that has all the compliance for your company. You have to have a capability statement that has a summary on uh, your business and then you have to have your past performances i have here a summary of all my past performances and then i have case studies detailing each one of these past performances providing what i did my solution the results uh, for each one of the agencies i worked for so before you even get started if you want to utilize ai you have to have these documents ready even on top of that you have to have your business description ready. So what I mean by that is you have to have the company name, the company address, your cage code, your UEI. You have to have that information ready. You have to feed it to the AI. Otherwise, you're just going to get garbage. I also, I have here a small business description. I have all my next codes. I have a website. Whatever AI you use, if you do not provide it with these documents, uh, today I'm going to show you the one for SamSearch. But whatever AI you use to write proposals, if you do not feed it correct information and valid information and abundance of information about your business, it's really the results that you're going to get are garbage. So as you can see here, I've floated all my past performances, my case studies, I have my past performances records, I have my compliance document, and finally I have my capability statement. Now, once you have that sorted, you only need to do this once and you store it in one place. Obviously, you can add more documents. Uh, this is just the bare, bare minimum. If you have a consistent pricing strategy, which in most cases you don't, but you could add that as well. Uh, you could even add more compliance documents. You could add more personnel information if you work with uh, the people that you work with, but you have to have that document ready. Now, once that's done, now let's get into looking for government contracts. You could utilize whatever software you use to find government contracts, but let's say, my company is in the cleaning business, so that's the type of contracts I'm looking for. And I'm looking across the country. I really don't care. I want to subcontract this uh, somewhere else uh, to some other business, and uh, that's what I'm looking for. So what I'm doing, I'm going to do here, I'm going to search for cleaning contracts. And I'm going to look for something that is is reasonable and something that I'm looking for. Uh, obviously, again, you could use whatever software. You could use sam.gov to do this, but I find this easier here because they give me summaries. So this I'm getting, uh, if I see the summary here, this one is Homeland Security seeking bid for janitorial services in Ontario. So that's not in the country. Uh, cleaning of a uh, trailer with no running water. Services include floor cleaning, dusting, and bathroom maintenance. This is something that I usually bid on, so I'm going to, Keep this in mind. I'm going to save it. I'm going to scroll down uh, and look into more. This one is Veteran Affairs Seeking Sources for Cleaning Entry Mats. Yeah, this one is also interesting as well. Anyways, once you find your government contract, you can go through this. The second step would be before you even write a proposal is to understand the opportunity. And with this one, for example, I have a lot of questions. And my main concern would be is can I subcontract this or not? If I if I don't, if I can't, I really don't want to even bother with this. And that's the main concern with me because obviously it's outside of the country. Um, I can come here and get more details, description. Um, one thing about this, it was posted five days ago and they want a response in a day. So I have to be quick about this one. I can't really waste time. And they all obviously they want something as soon as possible. They posted it five days ago. Um, Okay, I'm looking at here at the, this one has RFI responses. So maybe I want to summarize this. Apparently there was an RFI um, that I could use. They have a past performance form that we have to fill. Let's see here, key performance, janitorial services, not required to have prior janitorial services as past performance. That's nice. Submission requirement, only the prime contractor information should be submitted. Okay. I could go and summarize all of these or I can download them, but I usually go here and utilize the Ask AI feature. I'm going to ask it uh, questions that I need to know if this is something I'm going to write a proposal for or not. I, I really don't want to waste my time here. So let's start right off the bat. Can I subcontract this to a company in Canada? 
Good news, I can subcontract this to a company in Canada. It explicitly states that having Canadian company as subcontractor for janitorial work is permissible. That's good news because otherwise this was this would be a quick no for me. Okay, so since a lot of my work has been in uh, around cleaning, but not explicitly cleaning, I want to ask, uh, do we need to have janitorial services as past performance to bid on this contract? I just want to get an idea of if they have any requirements about this. So no, you do not need to have janitorial services listed as past performance to bid on this contract. That's again, a second yes for me, uh, because if they required explicit janitorial services, then that be that would be an issue for me. I have a questions that I usually ask any AI that I would like to analyze government contracts for. So I'm gonna ask, uh, I'm gonna ask it, this is free. I'll have this in the description of the video. I'm gonna ask it to break down the evaluation criteria because I wanna know what I'm gonna be judged based on. Okay, so we're getting here a response about the technical capability. We see here that we have to submit technical proposal detailing how, to, how we plan to meet uh, specific maintenance needs. Uh, as outlined in the statement of work, including description, their approach, method, past performances, quotation will be evaluated based on questionnaire responses regarding past performance. So although it's not required, it's something that they look into. Only past performances within the past 36 month, months uh, related to janitorial services will be considered. Okay. If no past performances, then the offer will receive no past performance rating. Okay. The price quotas must provide a price quote using the specific specified price quote template included in the solicitation. So we have to fill up the price quote template. So we have to include that with our proposal. Okay, now we know. I want to ask, do we have to put the contractor's name or uh, or the subcontractor's name on the past performance form or both? Okay, on the past performance form, you should submit the prime contractor's information since the prime contractor will be the one receiving the contract with the government. Therefore, you do not need to include the subcontractor's name on the past performance form. So we only have to include our own uh, name in the past performance form. I have past performances around that, so I think I should be good to submit a bit on this. But it mentioned here the statement of work. I would like to get more information on the statement of work. I'm going to say, what is the statement of work? Okay, so the statement of work is detailing obviously what needs to be done. Uh, the U.S. Custom and Border Protection under the Department of Homeland Security require janitorial services in Ontario. The procurement aims to provide cleaning services. The frequency is once a week. Tasks include cleaning floors, dusting, counters, uh, all that jazz. Services location, here's the service location. Period of performance, the contract is set to start uh, from March 1st. So that's good. I wonder if the subcontractor field here would show me subcontractors in that area so we see here there are a few i could look those up contact them i could just click and get their profile and look them up and see if they would be a good fit for me to work with them obviously based on their business description and their views but i'll have to look more into those okay so now we know that this is a good opportunity for us we can subcontract this we have all the details we have to submit a bid uh, sorry a proposal as soon as possible now i have my as i mentioned i have my documents ready i have my past performances of all the cleaning work that i've done in the past so i think i should be good you could also Obviously, you have to do this. You have to have all your documents. Now, I'm just going to click on Generate Proposal. And I'm going to generate an outline first, edit it, and then we'll look into the proposal. OK, so now the proposal uh, uh, the proposal outline is ready to be generated. I want to look into this. I want to modify this as much as possible because I don't want to cover everything the AI thinks I should cover because I know, for example, that the cost breakdown, I know from the chat I just had that I have to fill a form for that. So I might not have to, to add a lot of details uh, in the pricing, uh, for example, section. Uh, past performances as well, there's a form that I have to fill up. So I might highlight this just quickly in my proposal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modify this to, to match my needs. So, this, uh, obviously, this starts off with this covering as much as possible. We want to bring it down to something that's reasonable. So just to avoid repetition and avoid unnecessary information. As a subsection, I really don't need this because it's covered already in the main one. And I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to 
I'm gonna also obviously update the writing plan for some sections. So for example, uh, I want to, instead of summarize, I want to outline the projects completed uh, that are uh, similar in scope and size. Uh, and I don't wanna mention the challenges, for example. I just wanted to mention those. So you can modify the AI writing plan for each and every section. Okay, so now I brought it down to the main sections that I need. Uh, I'm now going to go ahead, after I modified the writing plan, modified the number of pages, I'm going to go ahead and generate a proposal. So now, key thing you have to invest in an AI that allows you to embed your own documents, your own information, and the solicitation information into one, because otherwise, uh, it's just chat GPT, and that's not really what we what we want. We want something that obviously uh, takes our information because otherwise we're just getting something so generic that anyone else can do. What we want is we want to apply what we have and the solicitation and get one proposal that we can obviously edit and submit. Okay, so once it's done generating the uh, proposal, we want to come here and edit this. Obviously, it's not it's not in its final form, so we want to make sure that what we are submitting is of good quality and we're not missing any details, and we have to fill up a lot of information that the AI does not know. So, for example, here, in the comprehensive, we want to make sure that the information we're getting here is accurate, but maybe this is too short. So we can just highlight this and say, uh, expand more on this. So obviously it's expanded a lot and it covered things I don't want it to cover because they're covered in other sections. So I could just say, keep it to three sentences. Okay, now this is better. I could just come here and for example, add this here. Now, let's say we are looking at the purpose of the contract. We're verifying that it got, it captured the information we, so it says that this is the facility in Ontario. It's saying that the contract will only will not only ensure hygiene, but also support the agency compliance with health and safety standards, which is especially vital given that the facility lack running water. This is a very important detail that it mentioned here. You, let's say I might ask it to expand more on this, but I want to see if this is covered elsewhere because this is a key point they probably would be look at, looking at a solution that factors in the lack of running water there. I also want to look at, so it covered all the past performances I have, so that's good. Um, we can see here that it, I don't have in my files a client feedback, but it gave me ideas of what things I need to fill out. So client feedback on reliability standard and health and protocol. So if I don't have this information, I could fill it out or even give it uh, key highlights and it would fill it out for me. Um, and then let's say when we get to pricing, this is perfect because I don't want it to make up uh, pricing, I wanted to leave this to me. Uh, so it's given me the uh, month, the, which is the quantity given in the proposal, which is 12 months. So this way I could um, uh, give my price for each one of these services for e every year, and then I could give a total quote. And then here it's justifying the price, it's just saying that we are ensuring competitiveness while maintaining our commitment to high quality services. Um, I could uh, ask it, for example, to uh, maybe summarize this a bit better because this is too long. So I could just highlight it and then say, um, summarize this to be short. So yeah, this is better. The short, I don't have to waste people's time. So, and just like that, we could edit this even further, go through every section, make sure that we are uh, ensuring the information we have is what we want to submit. And then you can just download this and submit it to the agency. I hope this was helpful. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.